Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. All right, we've been talking a lot about equilibrium and free energy and so forth in the past few videos. Now we're going to do an application of that, and you've actually seen this in general chemistry, uh, but it was called something different. In general chemistry, it was probably called an ice table or something like that, where you have an initial amount of something, a change, and then an equilibrium concentration or pressure, and you called it an ice table, and you probably only up, went up from initial change in equilibrium. You didn't do these other two things down here. Okay? But in the physical chemistry course, it's typically referred to as the extent of reaction. So what is the extent of reaction before we do any problem here? The extent of reaction is, first of all, given by this Greek letter psi. Um, it's this little squiggly thing right here. And really what it is is it's just how much did the reaction go. Okay, so if we have some equilibrium reaction right here, we're going to start off with some amount of the reactant. Okay, in this case, we're going to call it N0. But in any case, we're going to lose some amount of that reactant because it's going to form the product. That amount of the reactant that we lose to form the product is called the extent of reaction. Okay, and again, the Greek letter psi. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to play around with initial concentrations and really pressures here because they're gases. The change, which is really the extent of reaction, and then equilibrium pressures. And then we're going to calculate mole fraction and partial pressure, and then develop an expression for the equilibrium constant for the gas reaction. Okay? So this is a little bit more than what you did in general chemistry with ice tables, but the first part of that should make intuitive sense. And actually, you guys have seen mole fractions and partial pressures, so those should also make sense when we get there. All right, here's our equilibrium reaction. We have chlorine gas. This is diatomic chlorine. And it's in equilibrium with two atomic chlorines in the gaseous phase. Okay, so these are gases, so eventually we're going to be dealing with these in terms of pressures, not concentrations. And in a lot of problems, it'll you'll have a certain amount of the reactant that you start out with. And so out of this chlorine gas, we're going to start off with N naught. Again, I'm not specifying a number, it's just some amount N. All right? And then we initially start out with no product. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to start out this way, but in this problem, I'm just telling you, it will start out with zero product and n naught of the reactant, Cl2. All right. Now, when you did this in general chemistry and you lost a certain amount of reactant, you usually put minus x, okay? and you always put in front of the x the coefficient of whatever uh, the species you're talking about is. So the coefficient of Cl2 is 1, so in general chemistry, it would have been minus 1x. Over here on the products, you're gaining those. And so the coefficient of Cl here is 2, so you would have put plus 2x. Here, instead of x, we're going to use the extent of reaction. It's basically the same thing. That's the Greek letter psi. So the amount by which the reactants, Cl2, are changing is minus psi because that amount of Cl2 is being formed into the product. And then we're also picking up some products but we have to consider the coefficient as well, so it's going to be plus 2 psi. All right? Then we can go and calculate the equilibrium pressures. To do this, we just add the initials plus the changes. Okay? So what happens if I add n naught plus negative psi? Then my equilibrium pressure of Cl2 is going to be n naught minus psi. All right? Fairly straightforward. On the products, 2Cl for atomic chlorine, if I add the initial 0 plus 2 psi, well, that's obviously an equilibrium pressure of 2 psi. All right? Now, you pretty much went up to this point, probably not symbolically. You probably did it with actual numbers here. But this is the point that you got up through in general chemistry most likely. What we can do now in physical chemistry is do something that really should be more intuitive now, is we can calculate mole fractions and partial pressures. Now, remember, to calculate the mole fraction, we need uh, the number of moles of whatever uh, species we're talking about divided by the total number of moles. Well, the moles of Cl2 at equilibrium is just n naught minus psi. And the number of moles of cl atomic chlorine at equilibrium is 2 psi, because we're in molar quantities. 
If I want to calculate the total number of moles, which will end up being my denominator of the mole fraction, I need to add the total number of moles, right? So that's going to be n naught minus xi plus 2 xi. And when I add these together, this 2 xi minus this xi means a net plus 1 xi. So notice in each one of my mole fractions here, the denominator is n naught plus xi. And that's because to calculate the total number of moles in this entire reaction, I had to add the equilibrium number of moles, n naught minus xi and 2 xi, which gives me n naught plus xi. Now to calculate the mole fractions, I just take the equilibrium number of moles right here and divide it by that total. So the mole fraction of Cl2 would be n naught minus xi divided by n naught plus xi. And then my mole fraction of atomic chlorine here would be 2 xi divided by n naught plus xi. If I want to calculate the partial pressure, let's say the partial pressure of Cl2 or the partial pressure of atomic chlorine, all I would need to do is take the mole fraction, which is a unitless number, and multiply by the total pressure. Because the total pressure, if this reaction is taking place in some container, that pressure is fairly easy to measure. So I just take the total pressure contributed from both of these gases and then multiply it times the mole fraction. And so the partial pressure just becomes whatever I had for the mole fraction times the total pressure in the container in which this reaction is taking place. So the partial pressure of Cl2 is just the mole fraction expression, n naught minus xi divided by n naught plus xi times the total pressure. Likewise, for atomic chlorine, the partial pressure of that would be 2 xi divided by n naught plus xi times the total pressure. All right. Now, I have partial pressures. Okay, so what I could do now with these is I could then calculate an expression for the equilibrium constant Kp. And it's Kp because I'm dealing with gases and pressures. Now remember, in general, the equilibrium expression is just the product of the products with their corresponding exponents divided by the product of the reactants with their corresponding exponents. Well, I only have one product, and its coefficient is 2, so its exponent will be 2. And on the reactant side, I only have one reactant, and its coefficient is 1, so its exponent will be 1. So what I can do is, for the product side, this is my atomic chlorine. So what I'll do is I'll take the partial pressure of atomic chlorine and square it. Now I do have to remember, if I'm, if I'm really being rigorous with this, I do have to ratio this against the standard pressure. Okay, So that's what this P with the superscript 0 is, it's the standard pressure. That's just being very rigorous, but and you'll see this in most physical chemistry textbooks. So it's the partial pressure of atomic chlorine ratioed against the standard pressure, and I'm going to square that because the coefficient here is 2. Then I'm going to divide by that of the reactants. It's the partial pressure of chlorine, diatomic chlorine, Cl2, ratioed against the partial pressure. All right? Now what I can do is I can now plug in the expressions for the partial pressure. Okay? So for atomic chlorine on the product side, it's 2 xi divided by n naught plus xi times the total pressure, and that's squared and then divide by the same thing but for diatomic chlorine on the reactants, n naught minus xi divided by n naught plus xi times the total pressure. Now, the question you're asking, what happened to the, the standard pressures? Well, if I have a, essentially a 1 over standard pressure squared on the top and a 1 over standard pressure in the denominator, if I were to actually multiply all that out, I would end up with just a 1 over standard pressure. Okay? just like that. Now what I can do is I can try to simplify this as much as possible. So here in the denominator of the numerator, I guess you could say that, I have n naught plus xi and it's squared. Down here in the denominator of the denominator, I have another n naught plus xi. So if I actually group the n naught plus xi's, this n naught plus xi in the denominator of the denominator will actually get a net movement up to the numerator, and so I could get n naught plus xi divided by the quantity n naught plus xi squared. So now I've grouped all the n naught plus xi's. Okay. Now all this other stuff, I would just have the two xi 
it's squared, so that would be 4 psi squared, 4 psi squared. And then here in the denominator, I just have an n naught minus psi. So 4 psi squared divided by n naught minus psi. All right. And then I have to remember, I also have this total pressure squared divided by one factor of total pressure, leaving one factor of total pressure still divided by the standard pressure. This step right here really is just a, a really big exercise in algebra, but I promise you if you multiply all this out and you should practice doing it, you get this expression right here. All right. Now, some things here are going to simplify nicely. Um, first of all, one factor of this n naught plus psi is going to cancel with one in the denominator. So all I should have left this is one factor of it in the denominator, n naught plus psi. I still have in the denominator this n naught minus psi. I need to remember to make sure to put those parentheses there. And then in the numerator, 4 psi squared. Now, you don't have to do this next step. Uh, but you can uh, foil out the denominator. Some people might actually prefer that. So if I foil this out, I get n naught squared, and then it's a I have I'm multiplying together a minus psi and a plus psi. So the net effect is minus psi squared. Still multiplied by four psi squared, and then I have a p total divided by the standard pressure, and this expression right here is now the expression for kp. So the nice thing about this is, is now if I know the total pressure, which is easy to measure, and I figure out the extent of reaction, which actually you can determine uh, fairly straightforward, and then the initial number of moles of the reactant, I just multiply all that together, plug it in, and I would have the expression for the equilibrium constant. All right. So hopefully that process made a little bit of sense to you. Again, we're just doing an extension of something from general chemistry. You've done ice tables before, initial change in equilibrium, but now we've added on mole fraction and partial pressure so that we can actually determine an expression for the equilibrium constant. Now, there's another parameter here that I'm just going to introduce. I'm not going to do anything with it here, but it's called the degree of dissociation, and it's uh, given by the symbol alpha, at least here. Um, the degree of dissociation is equal to the ratio of the extent of reaction psi divided by the initial number of moles of the, of the gas n naught. All right? And if you take psi divided by n naught, you get the degree of dissociation alpha. Now, what you can do is you can multiply both sides here by n naught, and you can get an expression for psi, and that's going to be alpha the degree of dissociation times n naught. And what you can do is you can substitute everything in this expression right here where you see a psi, you can substitute it with alpha n naught. And in some cases that might be preferable because alpha may be known or you may be able to figure out alpha a lot easier. And simply knowing alpha and multiplying it by n naught will give you psi. All right, and you can make that substitution yourself. But this is the basic idea. So hopefully this process, this video makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.